It's Wednesday, April 10th. Here's a little taste of what's coming up on a mayor's office. They weren't getting it done, and Jackson Holiday is the best prospect in the game. Let's stop keeping them down there. Let's get them up there. Start the clock. This guy's going to be one of the best, best players in the game. I love it, dude. I'm fired up. You can tell I'm fired up. And I'm in love. How we doing, brother? Oh, when you're doing the wheel into the oh, book, God. you're in a good mood. So you know what you know what th- you know what this really is? What's when it? Dusty Rose was used to hit you with the big elbow back in the 80s. Oh. You go like this, and then he'd come like boom, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, Dusty's hitting it with the elbow. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, the WWE is surging right now. That was like epic proportions. Dude, WrestleMania was incredible, bro. I mean. I was on McAfee yesterday, and I, I had to. I let. I went a little fan because I <laughs> yeah. had to throw into him, dude. Incredible WrestleMania, and I saw something where he was saying he just wanted to be a WWE wrestler growing up. Like, yeah. I'm not kidding you, bro. If it was between Major League Baseball player or WWE wrestler, I think I would have been a WWE wrestler. I don't know if I had the athleticism oh. to do what McAfee does off the top rope, but at the end of the day, dude, dude. always wanted to be a wrestler. And when when The Rock came back. And Triple H is now in charge because Vince McMahon's out. <laughs> and dude, I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw the freaking. I saw the, the, the match when 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 the lights went out and the Undertaker oh, was there. And he no slammed the Rock. There's videos. Then, there's videos. There's videos, off. there's videos online of grown men like hysterically, like starting to hysterically cry when they saw the Undertaker, like crying, crying when they saw that he came out. That was I, a good, admit, that was I got a little. I got a little well. choked up in my house. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so did John Dennis. John Dennis texted me. He's like, I got a little choked up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's funny. Back to he's hysterical, man. Do you think he really doesn't know as much about baseball as he says he doesn't know? I think. Yeah, yes, know. I really do. I really think he doesn't know. Much. What did he say? I think he just, NFL. <laughs> he said something yesterday. He's like, and by the way, he, he admits this. So, like, we're not making fun of him. He's the guy's a genius. He's like one of my favorite people in the industry. Right. But he said yesterday to you, he goes, he asked you, he goes, Wait, you're a lefty. That gives you an advantage, right? So you have a bigger advantage than the righty hitters. And, it, and you explained it properly. Like, oh, well, yeah, if I were fast. Like... Yeah, like, I don't have an advantage, but most people do. <laughs> yeah, he's great. I, I, told, I, told you, I told you that I told you that story when Luis Gonzalez at the All-Star game in 99, I, I was leading the league in hits with 100, 227. You think as a lefty, you get some infield hits. He's like, Case, how many hits you got? I go, 127. He goes, you're leading the league in hits, right? I go, yeah, I go. He goes, how many are infield hits? I go, zero. He goes, yeah. now that's raking. <laughs> raking. That's raking. Now that's it. 127 legit hits. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, there's one guy who's looking for his first tonight, bro. And we are, oh, dude, last night, this came down like a lightning bolt. Jackson mm-hmm. Holiday coming to the show, bro. You know him well. You know his dad well. You're excited. Jake knows him. This is an exciting yeah, dude, so excited. I got a chance to hang out with Jackson and his dad, Matt, and Ethan, and, you know, the, the, the Leslie, the whole family. What great – first off, this dude comes from great stock. Matt Holiday is one of the best guys. Our grandfather is one of the best guys, too. Uh, Josh, their uncle. I mean, they're just good people, good, good people. And, uh, you know, this kid's a stud. At the end of the day, we all know, the Orioles know, he should have broke camp with them. Mm-hmm. Stop with the sending this guy down for 10 days stuff. Paul Skeen's out in Pittsburgh. He should be up too. Let's stop doing this, throwing guys down there. At the end of the day, the production the Orioles were getting from their second base was like 200. I'm like, okay, bring up the best prospect in baseball. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bring him up. Bring him up now. And Jackson Holiday, I- I'll never forget this. When I was in Watertown, New York, I'll never forget Joel Skinner, my manager, said, hey, listen, I know you got Jim Tomey ahead of you. I know you got Richie Sexton up there, too. He goes, don't worry about that. He goes, take care of your business. Control the controllables. Take care of what you need to take care of. If you hit and you hit at an epic level, he said, they're going to have to do one of two things. They're going to have to call you up or trade you. And I ended up getting called up and traded, which I got both done. <laughs> but I remember, dude, that took such a burden off me. Like, hey, man. 
I can't worry about anything but take care of my business. So when I saw Jackson Holiday go down this year, I thought to myself, there's no doubt his dad, who understands the mental side of this game, of not pleasing other people, you got to be able to control the controllables, be the best version of yourself. That's what gets you paid. That's what gets you up there. That's what gives you longevity in this game. So when Jackson Holiday went down, I was like, this guy's going to rake. He's not having a, a pity party for himself. He's not sucking his thumb in the corner, feeling bad he's in the minors. He's going to go down, dominate like he did, and, and force a hand. And obviously he forced a hand because up in the Orioles system, at the, at the big league system, they weren't getting it done. And Jackson Holiday is the best prospect in the game. Let's stop keeping him down there. Let's get him up there. Start the clock. This guy's going to be one of the best, best players in the game. I love it, dude. I'm fired up. You can tell I'm fired up. Dude, I'm extra fired up. Are you ready? I told you before the show, I promise you, you're going to get goosies, man. You're going to get goosebumps right now. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Heard this from the man himself today who told me, uh, told actually a lot of people this story, but uh, he's going to wear number seven for the Orioles, okay? Here's the significance of that. Nobody has worn number seven for the Baltimore Orioles since the Ripken family was there. Bill wore it for a little while to honor his dad after he passed. And then they basically just kind of like retired it without retiring it. He's going to wear that because the Ripken brothers spoke this morning and said, you know what? If any family, what to your point, if any family can honor our dad's legacy, not just Jackson, but who his dad was and how great of a person his dad was and how great his dad played the game. They said, go for it. So he's oh, going to be the, f am I right? Chill. Bill Rick told that story this morning and it was like tears, man. How great is that? And and he told, he was on MLB Central this morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. awesome. Dude, that's like, so that that's Cal, Cal seniors number. It was Cal seniors number. I believe Bill wore it for one year after his dad passed. Um, but I mean, it was Cal Senior's number, but the Orioles and and, and Cal's part of the new ownership group. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So to get to get Cal's blessing and Billy's blessing, hey. I got the chills again. Hey, man! At the end of the day, Matt Holiday, that family is you know a, you know they're they're a baseball family too. And dude, I got a chance in December. I went down. Jake and I went down there, and Andrew, we, and we hit with Jackson and Ethan. And Heston cursed that, and so you know it was pretty impressive. And Matt was in their cages, and we we played some poker that night. We had some. Good, I mean, Matt Holiday was cooking up steaks and burgers <laughs> at an epic rate. It was incredible. They're just great people. Leslie, you're welcome. They're just a wonderful family, dude. Ethan Holiday might be the best of all of them. Oh come on! Now I'm not I'm just saying. <laughs> Jackson's incredible. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, Jackson might even say it, too. Ethan's swing wow. is beautiful. He's a junior in high school. Holy moly. And it, they, they might be the first ever brother combo to be 1-1. One, one. Wow. It's never happened in the game. And after watching Ethan, I mean, if you didn't know who everybody was and you said who's got the best swing, you, you said Ethan. No you know that guy right there. Yeah, I swear, dude. I swear. <laughs> I think. Yeah. They got good yeah. genes too, man. Matt Holiday. I've heard so many people over the years say Matt Holiday was the strongest, one of the strongest baseball players that ever lived. Like ever lived. He's got the Popeye forearms. He's a monster. And now he's playing pickleball at an epic rate. Like guy like plays like eight <laughs> games of pickleball a day. All you guys, baseball players, football players, and and baseball and football players retired are pickleball maniacs right now. I know. It's I know Golden Tate really well. He's like really good. And Burns is really good. Like he, those guys play all the time. It's funny. They sport. love it. Dude. They love yeah. it. All right, back to baseball though. There he is again, man. We talked about him yesterday. Mike Trout, six homer, boom, man on a mission this year, dude. That's the point, dude. I think with Otani being gone, now it's really Mike Trout's team again, right? In a in a big way, and. I think I think I think with Trout being hurt the last couple of years, we're forgetting about him a little bit, and he's reminding us nightly. Uh, here's number six for you, dead center. I mean, he's hitting some bombs too. Mm -hmm. This guy is really good, man. Over a thousand OPS, hitting around three hundred. 
still the, still one of the best players in the game. I mean, obviously, yeah. one of the greatest of all time, but he's yeah. just proven the fact he's not done making some noise, bro. Yeah, the, the the talking baseball guys who do a great job over the John Boy Media posted something yesterday. Like, Did we forget that Mike Trout might actually still be the best player in baseball? I, I like <laughs> great point. It, it, I, I said it's almost like he's almost before he started hitting his home runs this year. We weren't talking about him that much. We really weren't. Yeah. Just like, oh, should he get traded? He might have that. Dude, he seems like he has an edge to that Jersey Shore edge going right now. I love. You know it. what? You know what, Chinch? Don't forget too this. The, the, this is an overlooked thing. That I think we're gonna. St- it's gonna. It's gonna be a storyline that plays out, especially if the Angels keep playing well. Ron Washington is their new manager. Now, don't forget about Wash. When he was the manager in Texas, they went to the World Series. Every team he's been on, Atlanta, wherever he goes, they win. Oakland, they win. Ron Washington's personality, the way he is, such a great guy, but such a motivator, been in the game a long time. He had a meeting after game two mm. in Anaheim, basically said, nah, we're not doing this. There's a new sheriff in town. We're not, expectations are different now. And you just want to, you've seen Trout take off since then. You just wonder if Mike Trout said, you know what, Wash, you're right. And I'm your guy. I'm your I'm your leader on this team. Let's go, let's go win some ball games. They've played great since that meeting after game two. You don't usually see that. It reminds me of Leland in 06, man. And Jim Leland in 06, there was a couple things, you know, I'm not gonna name any players, but a couple things happened with some players that had been there already. Leland called him in the office like a week after the season started and said, Hey, you don't want to be here? There's the door. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care any of that stuff. There's the door. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> Jim Leland's in town. I don't know how you guys did it before, but there's a new sheriff in town. And that year in 06, we went to the World Series, dude. All go. because they had the talent, but the leadership's not there. Right. You got a leadership, a guy at the top, that manager's so important. So don't let's not overlook Ron Washington being the new, you know, the new guy in town there. That guy's an absolute uh, stud. Everywhere Wash goes, he wins. And he brings such a great energy, and he loves baseball. He's a leader. Great point, dude. And let's not forget, before the season started, they did, you know, they were can have considered giving Otani some form of money. They also were rumored for Snell. So they hang tight. They're in a wild card, wild card type race. They got some money to spend in the second half of the season if they can hang tight. Yeah. And maybe that's a better way to do it, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, you're looking at that rotation too. Reed Detmers is off to a great start. He's he's uh, really dominating so far. So we'll see, man. We'll see. They got some. They got some. They got some decent pieces mm-hmm. with Moniac, with Ohapi, um, you know, uh, um, Tyler uh, Ward, with Ward out there. I mean, they got some good. They got they got some bangers in that lineup. Yeah. So. All right. Moving on to not so much bangers, but the. The boogie down Bronx again. The Yankees are rolling. First of all, it's their best record in like 195,000 years. The other three times they've had a record this good, they've gone to the World Series. Okay. Uh, Carlos Rodon looked good. Now, I will say, first of all, we didn't even talk about Nasty Nestor the day before, eight shutout innings. I think the Marlins, those kids get off the bus and just start swinging bats. That's like, <laughs> like they literally swing at every single pitch. And you got dude, the, the one game with the Nestor game was two hours. Oh, dude, it was two hours. It was two hours because literally every pitch he threw, they swung at. They must have swung 155 times that game. But listen, yeah. you can't take away. You still got to beat the team in front of you, right? You right, right. They're still big players, dude. Yeah. Yes. Now, Rodon, though, his ERA is like 174 or something like that in three starts. Looks better. Looks more, more locked in than he did last year. Dude, I think also, too, listen, Carlos Rodon is going to be huge for the Yankees because – with Garrett Cole being out, you just looked and you said, this rotation needs to step up. And they have, man. Stroman's pitched well. Rodon's pitched great. Uh, Cortez has pitched great. Clark Schmidt's done well. You know, uh, uh, Heel's done well. Um, so, but I think Rodon's the biggest piece, dude. I think Rodon's the guy that they're really going to lean on. And, man, is he is he delivered these first three starts. I mean, his stuff looks great. Um, he's pounding the strike zone. And, dude, I'm telling you, being in New York, it's a different animal there, Chinch. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you've been a Yankee fan your whole life. It's a different animal. It, it, it's not for everybody. And I, I also would like to see 
guys that sign long-term deals, are they even more comfortable their second year? You know what I mean? Like that's absolutely right. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, because I feel like that first year, it, it's it's intense and it's awesome. It's intense, but awesome. Like, you know, like those fans are passionate, man. It's sort of like a religion there, and you feel it night in and night. They don't take a night off. Yeah. Players don't take a night off. The fans don't take a night off. You know what I mean? No. And the roll calls there every night, and it's incredible. So to see Rodon pitching the way he's pitching right out the gate, that's a great sign for the yeah. uh, for the Yankees right now, man. That's a huge, and that was their big sign last year too. In the off season was uh, you know, was um, was was Carlos Rodon, and yeah. you know, a lot of injuries last year just never got. Never got going, and uh, he, he got in better shape. He's, you know, coming in with something, a little chip on his shoulder. You know, went and took a little break last offseason to get his mind right. He just looks like a different guy. Yeah. Him and Cortez are built like uh, half of the guys on my uh, softball team and are playing with my cousins, but they're still jacked dudes. They got huge. Yeah. They're big guys. <laughs> yeah. Nasty, nasty. They're great guys. They're both great, great guys, too. Oh, that's great. Um, by the way, that crowd, dude, there's something I'm telling you, the Soto, I think signing Soto kind of electrified the town more than I actually really thought it would. The crowds are so loud this year. It's it's really different than it has been in the new stadium. Even the year yeah. they, the, the, they they were going to the World Series, like, it hasn't been like this. So they got some mojo going in that town, I got to say. Dude, like I said, being at the game the other night, man, you could feel it. It's real. Right. It's real. And uh, I think Soto coming along, man, just changed everything. Yeah. Because now you got Soto Judge. It takes a little pressure off Judgey, too, because, like, Soto Judge 2-3, I mean, Soto's the best. They're so good. And look at Judgey. Judgey hasn't gotten hot yet, but last night he was one for one, three walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got the second most walks in the game behind bets or something like that. I mean, he's about, and when, and like I said, when Judgey gets hot, watch out, dude. I don't know if, this, if, if if those guys get hot same time. Riz had a couple hits last night. Verdugo hit a bomb after yeah. three hits the night before. Dude, like, the, dude, they got some length. They got some length in that lineup, brother. You said before the season, and everybody blew up because it was Sean Casey said this. But like you said, get some lefties in that lineup, and you're going to straighten that lineup out. And that's the bottom line. That's what they the, needed. It, it's so stretched. It was, so stretch the tough part last year was it was still righty dominance. If you get a sinker slider guy, slider guy, good sinker slider guy, it was it was tough matchups. Yeah. All right. All right. Now let's go to one of your other former teams, your hometown or second hometown, the Pirates, dude. Are we concerned about the closer? And <laughs> because some of his teammates were were going to his back. So what are our feelings there? They look great. He's the games they've lost, their great closer has has lost them which is weird. It's just weird. Well, listen, dude, David Bednar led the National League last year at 39 saves. And this guy's a Yunzer. He's a Pittsburgher, dude. <laughs> I saw Rowdy Tellez. I mean, Rowdy's a great guy, but I saw Rowdy come into his locker and, hey, we don't boo guys here. Like, listen, dude, Bednar's from Pittsburgh. He's probably booing himself. <laughs> He's probably like, I got to get it done. You know, like, hey, it's frustrating when you don't get it done as a player, you know, you know what? But, dude, David Bednar is one of the toughest dudes I know. And he wants the ball. He's a true closer. And he wants it in Pittsburgh, his hometown. So, you know, he's going to get it going, dude. He's too good, you know. And and like I said, all-star last year. This guy's an absolute stud. Little hiccup to begin the year, dude. It's like any offensive guy that, that struggles out the gates. Listen, no different for pitching. The problem with pitching is when you're a relief, relief pitcher and you give it up two or three times, your ERA is at a 12, 13, 14. Because you just don't have the sample size of innings. So over 162, David Bednar's built for the long haul, dude. He's going to be fine. There you go. I agree with that wholeheartedly. All right. Keep th and, and Shelton will keep throwing him out there. Of course. Well, why not? I mean, why wouldn't you? Dang it. I always I thought I lit all my lights. They turned off. Chitch, every time, dude. That, oh, yeah, it went out double right there. No, no. This one's still on. Here, look. I'll do oh. this. No, that's not working. There you go. Looks cool. like the eclipse is in your basement, dude. <laughs> the eclipse. I'm so over the damn eclipse. What an overrated thing. Anyway, uh, okay. Speaking of eclipse, Tyler Glass now eclipsed the record book yesterday. 14 Ks, dude, in like, I mean, it was like breezing. It was breezing. You normally hear 14 Ks. That's like snorting and farting, and as police act usually says. He was right. smooth. He was in and out. He could have kept going if he wanted to, I think. I don't uh, know. 
Yeah, I think one thing, one thing with Glass now, man, he's so tough because the fastball is unpredictable. It's a little effectively wild. You're trying to game plan for it, and you watch the video, you're like, man, this guy's not, like, spotting the fastball. He more tunnels it, right? So he tunnels at the upper rail. He'll get up on you, and you do not want to uh, – uh, the game plan against Tyler Glass now is get him early. Because if you're waiting on Tyler Glass now, that that 12-6 hook, he go. Mm. It's so dirty because if you think about it visually, he throws that top rail heater at about 97. Then he drops the 12-6 curveball that is in that top rail for the last 10 feet, and then it leaves you. So you commit to it early, and it's just – it really is the next-level pitch, so almost like a Corbin Burns cutter or Devin Williams change up. You know, certain pitches in the game – uh, you know, a, a Garrett Cole four seamer at the top. There's certain pitches. The Tyler Glassdale curveball is one of those pitches. Blake Snell curveball is one of those pitches. I tell you what, Chinch was on MLB tonight last night. Ryan Dempster. He had a really good point. Demp was talking about the injuries that we talked about in the game of the UCL tears and how everybody's chasing velocity. Everybody's chasing spin rate. We're eventually going to have to look at that spin rate and go, hey, man, this guy's got 2,900 spin rate and not reward that. Mm. you got to almost say, man, he's going to get hurt at 2,900 spin rate. Let's get that down to 2,600. He's going to get hurt at that uh, 2,600 spin rate fastball. Let's get that down to 23.5. The numbers are going to say that's you're going to blow out there, right? Right. Go ahead. You got some? No, I was going to say, I, I, it's amazing you said that. I actually – put a tweet out yes, yesterday and it kind of blew up a little bit because like some of the pitchers that I know, like, please, second, I think that's what I like to do, but like, I didn't see what he said, but I thought the same thing here. Here's what happens. What, what happened to hitting? Okay. Going to arbitration in the analytics era, right? What, what, like when you went into arbitration, like really you're going, I'm saying I'm a 300 hitter. I do this. I do that. Guys have been getting paid offensively because Okay, oh, look at their walk rate. Look at this. Look at that. That's what we're going to pay our guys for. And so guys started hitting that way and playing that way, and the game kind of changed. I think it's the same thing, the same concept of what you're talking about. In that pitching, if you start paying pitchers to go deep, guess what? They're going to make the adjustment. These are professional athletes. I'm going to get paid to go deeper into games, even if my strikeout rate isn't as high or even if my, uh, you know, my spin rate on my slider isn't as high. You're getting paid for – you're getting paid for – a statistical category and i'm telling you everybody in the history of major league baseball you want to be a major league baseball you want a baseball player you want to do it right you want to do it the way you've been taught and everything you'll you can make adjustments that's isn't it a game of adjustments and i think pitchers if you start rewarding guys major league baseball start rewarding guys for going deep into innings six innings seven innings i think you'll see less injuries i I, I could be stupid by saying that, but I really do think like you're going to make the adjustments. Guys are going to get paid. Me being a television producer, I get paid on ratings and whatever and this and that. So I'm going to focus my attention to what I'm going to get paid more for in my next job. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? No, yeah. you're right, dude. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. The um, the standards got to change. The standard for what? I, hey, man, these pitchers are only going twice around, so they're maxed effort. They're not going that third time around the lineup. So then bringing the reliever who's max effort, spin rate up, funnel pitches. Well, guess what, guys? We have almost an epidemic here, an epidemic of UCL injuries. And guess what? The, the, the numbers say also you get one, you got six years for the next one. So you're going to start seeing contracts go down. You're, people aren't going to want to commit to pitchers for six, seven years anymore because guys are you know almost guaranteed to get injured. Nowadays is what it seems like. The one thing, the one point I want to make, Chase, was Dempster yesterday put up two faces. It was a, it was a, it was a great thing. The one guy on the left threw ninety seven miles an hour with like a 3,000, 2,900 spin rate on his curveball, and I can't remember twenty five hundred on his fastball. I don't know exactly the rates. Player number two on the right. He threw a fastball, 96.4 average fastball. So it was 0.6 down from 97. He threw his curveball at like 2,600 spin rate and threw the fastball at like 2,300. And then we brought up who, what? Uh, the, the two pitchers. They were both Tyler Glasnow. Hmm. Tyler Glasnow pre-Tommy John. Tyler Glasnow post 
Chom Tommy John. And guess what? The post Tommy John one who last year threw 120 innings was finally healthy. He's the guy that got paid. Mm. The guy that was throwing harder with a greater spin rate and stuff couldn't stay healthy. He never got paid. There you go. So the point is, you can still pitch and drop the, you know, it, it doesn't have to be so nasty with the spin rate and the pull down, all that stuff that the use, so you get to where the UCL can take it. Yeah. And hey, what, what's wrong with, I don't know, guys, I grew up watching that you guys, that you grew up facing Pedro Martinez, John Smoltz, guys like that. What are they? 94, 95, kept me through the sixth, seventh inning. All of a sudden, you see one 100 and 9,900. <laughs> right, right. What What's wrong with that? Get me through those first two times in the lineup. Let me let me be healthy. Let me be good. Then when I hit you in the third time in the lineup, it's like extra juice. It's still sitting in a pocket. It's like it's like playing a video game, man. Like that energy bar goes down, and you got to change your pitcher. Yeah. I, I don't know. Throw as hard as you can does not work. It does. I mean, yeah, it'll work for a certain amount of time. We can name a, th a thousand guys. Did you not think Noah Sind Syndergaard was going to be like the next Nolan Ryan for the Mets? Two years later, he he hasn't been able to stay healthy. And the guy's yeah. huge. The guy's in the best shape of any life I've ever seen. Ozzie Gian said yeah. it the other day. You guys all say it. Can't pull fat. Can't, Can't pull fat. Exactly. Well, dude, Justin Verlander talked about the other day. He said, and I played with Verlander when he was a rookie in 06 and then his first second year in 07. Dude, Verlander would sit 93, 94, but in like the seventh, eighth inning or got into a situation with some traffic on the bases, bases loaded, 99, 100. And you're like, man, where was that? Well, he's trying to go deep into the game, so he's pacing himself, spotting, pitching, change up, curveball. But when you get into big situations, traffic, traffic on the bases, game on the line, 99, 100. You're like, whoa, where'd that come from? Blowing guys away when he needed a punch out. You know, um, uh, and, that, and that was just Max Effort, dude. Max Effort. Throw as hard as you can every pitch. We're, and we're starting to see that the body can't take it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big you are, dude. I don't care if you have your quadzilla and your back's huge. And that UCL, it doesn't matter. That ligament is right here. And it's not, you know, it, it doesn't matter how big you are. You know? Exactly. It can't it only take so much. Right. I, I totally agree. Hey, look at Marcus Stroman. Marcus Stroman's always on the top of the leaderboards for innings every year. He's my right. guy, dude. Right. He doesn't throw. Yeah. He doesn't throw 120 miles per hour like all the other guys. You know. Hey, go look at kids. If you do not know, go look at Jamie Moyer pitch. Go Google Jamie Moyer pitching from back in the day. You can still be a really good, effective pitcher without throwing 125 miles per hour. Yeah, Tom Glavin, Greg Mag, all these guys, a lot of guys, spot. A, a spotted fastball, a well located fastball David, is not hittable. David Cohn, Jimmy Key, right. keep right. going. Al Lighter, well, Al Lighter would light you up. Al threw pretty hard with it. <laughs> you got your grill <laughs> all the time. Nice. All right. Hey, uh, I, I thought it was last night. I was all excited last night. I got my popcorn ready for the Seth Myers program with Sean Casey and Ryan Dempster, but that's this evening now. That's tonight, baby. Yeah, uh, tune in to Seth Myers. You got a good Dem team? Denver going on. This is our eighth time on Seth Myers, dude. Love Seth. He's always supported uh, me and my Miracle League at Pittsburgh. His dad's from Pittsburgh, and you know, big big Steelers fan, big Red Sox fan. So looking forward to going on the show tonight with Seth. Dude, there's a lot of like young fans out there, hip fans. You should borrow those uh, red leather pants from uh, from, from Seth Sarah. Tonight. Yeah, you should wear those tonight. I can't get in those. To auction these off for like. A charity or something. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah needs, feels like she needs to auction them off for a charity. Okay, you can get my Yankee jersey and Sarah's red leather pants in 4,000 subscribers. Well, I know we're going to get some creepy, creepy subscribers. <laughs> <after that. laughs> oh, it's great. All right, well, have, have a blast tonight. Tell my boy Demp I said hi. I love them. Man. I will, man. I will. And don't forget, subscribe, download. Let's get to 4,000. Let's get that. I want to get that signed Yankee jersey out to yeah. all of you. Uh, all the fans out there, and then we'll then we'll get another one going. Yeah, and then maybe then maybe you creeps can uh, buy uh <laughs> we can auction off Sarah's pants. <laughs> it's so weird. Dude, we're creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. <laughs> we're not. Oh my god, it's so right, funny. Brother, have fun tonight. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, man. Sounds good, Jason. Love you, brother. Hey, everyone out there, thanks for listening. Catch you tomorrow. See you, buddy.